we talked about this. I said, aim low, you know, and yeah. I don't mean aim low for your life. I mean, on the journey, like when you're, when you're walking up a flight of stairs, you're not looking at that top stair. You're looking at the next one, yeah. um, this one, this step, 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 step. And then you can leave them behind you. But if your goal was to get to the top in one leap, well, you can't do that. Right. You have to go up the steps. Welcome back to the show. There's no telling where we'll go. So come and share a laugh on the Imp and Skiz podcast. All right, Skiz, we've got a fun one today. Yep. Q&A session. Yeah. Right? Bunch of questions submitted, which uh, we grabbed. We have a whole list of them. We do. Right here. Um, which, and there's some really good questions I'm excited to answer, but there's a, there's a more pressing question. Mm -hmm. You said last episode, you, uh, you were going to work out with your son. Yeah. Did it happen? <laughs> that's, that's right. Did it happen? Did it you do did. It? it did. Um, yeah. He, How you feeling? Yeah. I feel sore and I'm hurt. We, we worked out, th we worked out three times and as, as excited, as excited as I am, the fact that we've done this, I'm more excited about the fact that we're already planning next week. Nice. Right. That was the whole premise of it is that I, even my own brain was like, Skiz, are you doing this so that you don't have to answer no to the podcast? And I really, <laughs> and, you know, and all in, I'm part of that was, I mean, as part of it. I mean, use what you got to use to motivate yourself. But uh, the bigger part was like, no, 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 this is something I want to be a standing thing. But here's what's interesting is what I got to witness is that we talked about, you know, the whole creating memories. Uh, and, and he just wants to spend time with me. I want to spend time with him too. I was so worried about slowing him down. He is an absolute professional, an absolute, That's like, awesome. first of all, my, so it's, and he's using my own stuff against me. What I mean by that is I used to train him when he was very young, right? <laughs> I used to be a CrossFit coach and, and the, and I had this phrase that you always used with him where I'd be like, anybody can do two more when he's like sweating and can't breathe. Yeah. Anybody can do two more. Yeah. He used that on uh -oh. me a lot. And I'm like, shut the up. Student <laughs> becomes the teacher. <laughs> Absolutely. Very nice. Yeah. So. Very nice. Well, good. Good for you. Sounds like you're getting a regiment. I thought, you know, when you said it, I thought you were just going to go do one session. No way. You're going to make it like a, a regiment. That's awesome. Man. Yeah. Well, congrats. Thanks. I need to get my button gear as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, anyway, we got a whole list of questions. Like I said, I'll start things off. This first one came in from Soulless Shreds. All right. It says, I have a few. There's a few on here. Uh, so the first one is for you, actually. So Skiz, since you are involved with most of the hermits from Hermitcraft server on some platform or another and are such an influence and joy to watch, if offered, would you consider taking that content creation leap and joining the Hermitcraft server? Wow. Uh, well, first of all, what a nice thing to say. Uh, I mean, absolutely, right? If that if that was a thing, if that was a, a scenario that presented itself, then absolutely. Now, based on the definition of leap, I wouldn't I wouldn't be have the I wouldn't be just able to quit my job or whatever. But mm -hmm. it's one of those things to where if that situation presented itself, I would be, I, I would love it. I would obviously love it. And mm -hmm. if, if, if the hermit saw me as a, as a value add to the server, it could be a good ad. If not, that's okay too. But the answer is yes. It's a resounding yes. That would be a, because, because I think what Solus shreds nailed it. I, every hermit I've met, which has been lots of them now, I feel like I've worked well with every single one of them and mm -hmm. I like them very much. They're just wonderful people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'd veto you. So no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I would love to have you on the server. Obviously, we would have so much fun. Yeah. So uh, hopefully someday, hopefully we'll see. We'll see. But uh, so let's well, hold on. I, hold on. This because this is not a pressure point That's for true. hermits, please. This yeah. is not. This is just. Oh a yeah. Leave the hermits alone. Leave we, them alone. Not a pressure point. Just this. I'm just answering honestly. <laughs> That's yeah. a good point. Good point. Um, and then the second part of Solus Shred's question was for me. You have been growing your channel and community drastically through your main channel, doing Hermitcraft, Hardcore, and streaming, Imp and Skiz, now a podcast, and, and also I released a Clips channel, by the way. And <laughs> <laughs> plug. Uh, anyway, it's amazing. And with you now being a full-time content creator, what do you feel is your next adventure? Or are you doing exactly what you have envisioned for your career? Um, I'm, I'm getting there. I would say like, I'm, I'm doing all the things that I wanted to do when I went full time. I wanted to, to definitely do more. That was one of the things I, I made a list. I was like things I would do if I went full time and I had a, a whole list and it was like, uh, you know, better quality, um, make sure that I'm adding, you know, more into like things like Patreon and things like that. Other ways to, to make sure that I can continue this as a business, but more importantly, what kind of content I mm -hmm. wanted to do. And the main thing I want to do there was like many different things. Like one, it helps me so I don't get bored. Right. And two, I just feel like putting all my eggs in one basket is a risk I, I didn't want to take. So, you know, we're doing a lot on the Imp and Skiz channel. Uh, we're doing this podcast. I'm doing lots of different things. And also I'm trying to do more like not just Minecraft. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I want to. 
like that's really where I want to get to. I'm not. We're not there yet. We're doing the podcast. That's a start. Mm -hmm. But like my ultimate dream for this was one for for you to join me in this in this full time content creation someday, mm -hmm. and then you and I to to do more together. Like we've had so many ideas that yeah. we've we've kind of put on the back burner, saying if we've ever got the time to do this this is the kind of content we would be making mm -hmm. and it's not just Minecraft. Right. It's, it's so many other things that would be super fun to do. And hopefully someday we'll get there and I can make that content with my buddy, but that's the goal right now. That's good. And you know, and the, the Minecraft vehicle is what started it all. And, and yeah. we're seeing and making that change is it's scary. It's risky and yeah. it's, it's damaging and we can, let's call it what it is. We were actually talking about this before we started the podcast is that every single podcast we release while we're proud of every, every bit of it, every podcast, we release results in many lost subs yeah. many yeah. right I mean, we're, we're posting a podcast on what started as a minecraft only channel right, right? exactly and so yeah. we, we we and it's it's a bait and switch we didn't mean to it was never that intent but we pulled people in like, oh, it was minecraft content and then we're like actually we really we would like our palette to be a little deeper than this and right. and, and for and some people are like well i wasn't interested in that and that's that's fine too right but it's a growing pain that we're both like you know what this is what we're doing and yeah. so i'm curious what, what are we gonna do outside of the podcast so, you know there's a lot yeah, of different well, we have some good ideas we do yeah and, and uh, if we ever get a chance to do it man i'm i'm i really want to i'm excited about what could come and and i don't think we're saying either that like we're eventually going to give up minecraft we don't know no, no. we don't know where that's going to go but we still love doing all the minecraft stuff yeah. skyblock and and uh naked and scared and, yeah it's way you know, too much fun yeah, you can't, exactly. i can't not do minecraft it's yeah. too much fun because we mentioned like that's that's our place to goof around now and not get in so much trouble yeah yeah <laughs> virtually instead of irl <laughs> so yeah i'm excited about you know i'm excited about the journey obviously I'm, I'm i'm doing what i wanted to do but there's so much more you know me i'm never satisfied i'm, I'm always wanting to do more and i have like a whole list of things i want to do uh in the future so yep so we'll get there um oh there was a third point <laughs> yeah so let's lighten us up today impulse and skiz with you being mu musicians uh would you have wait would you or have you played slash written music together oh yeah that's a good one yeah have we written music together we have written music together we we did when we did uh I always call it drum theater. It's WGI. It's WGAZ. Yeah. And we wrote that whole show together. And that was fun. That was, it was too much fun. It's <laughs> it, And we've talked about this in the past too, where it was legitimately one of my, my most proud chapters was that show that, yeah. that we wrote together. And, and, and you've written stuff without me. And, and then we wrote that together. And obviously then I was in my own rock band for a while there. And, mm -hmm. and so we, what we've, I will say this, when we wrote together, when we did stuff together, is some real magic happened. That was fun. You know? And it wasn't just us. There was also another yeah. dude. I bring. I I gonna say his full name, but his first name was Joey, Joey. and Joey. he was a Joey. young kid. And what a savant he was! Oh yeah, yeah, he, he was brilliant. He yeah, was such yeah. He a wrote he wrote all the the pit stuff because yeah. like neither one of us knew how to do that, and yeah. he was just. And Pitt is much more for it's it's more musical, right? That's yeah. where your marimbas are, your xylophones yeah, and stuff like that. All That's the, all the melody. Yeah, he understood that on a level that we just simply don't understand it. We yeah. are rhythm masters, and he's like a music master, and that yeah. was that. It was the trifecta, all three of us. Ah, oh, it was good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got together. I don't know if it was multiple times a week, but I remember you lived down the street from me back then too, on the other side of the yeah. valley. Yeah, the, the valley. valley. I happen to be wearing a valley shirt right now. <laughs> for the sons but <laughs> that's funny anyway um those nights were great yeah I'm not sure my wife enjoyed that but they were great uh, <laughs> but yeah we also did play together uh, obviously mm -hmm. in high school you're you were my section leader we talked about that in a couple podcasts already but then there was that one drum line we did it was like a college community college drum line yeah i don't know if we ever did we even play any shows for that one we did we did, did we, we did we did it was more on a stage type thing yeah. it wasn't like uh it wasn't drum theater it wasn't marching band it was just a drum line like a it was just a performing drum line is all yeah. it was. And it was sort of, it was kind of mixed with like the best of the best. It really it was. was. They, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't like a school. Yeah. It was, it was a handpicked. Most everybody was in their twenties plus yeah. on that one. Yeah. And so it was like, it was like career. Yes. Drummers, dude. Basically. That was a very, I mean, that was, that was very humbling for me because I, being on the snare line, I was on the end and, and just, let's just talk it. When you're on a snare line, the further away from the center you are, the more, the, the more you suck. Yeah. I was on the very end. Yeah, so was yeah. I uh, when I marched drum corps. You're right. That's, that's, that's the way it works, right? Yeah. The, the, you get this, the center is, is the closest in. And it's like this thing when you're on the end, it's like a very humbling, like, oh, I suck. But we are, you know, we were among the best of the best. And it was just like, these guys are, are awesome. Yeah. You know, and it was, uh, and I remember, I, can I tell this story? Sure. About yeah, my, I mean, you know, my, I, I was going to say, I was 
you were on the end. I was even further because I was on the bass drum. Next you were the bass. Yeah, you were. Yeah, and that <laughs> was he makes snare line. But I, you know what's funny, dude, is that I mean, it, you know, we talked about how we played in high school and then we lost touch or whatever, and we regained touch. It also like this drum line we were on together post high school was sort of in that story that we never really dove right. into yeah. and. I was over on the left side of the snare line and I'm not in some of these. Ugh, I remember the snare line was just so awesome, dude, but you were the top base, which mm -hmm. means you were right to my left. Yep. And that was really comforting for me. I was like, I got my buddy right here. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's so awesome. And so I got my buddy right here. And so you're looking at me. I, and now here's the deal. Okay. We're going to do this. And I know, I think I've told you this story. I know I've told you this story and it's, it was so weird to me when you're a drummer, you have a focus point. Yeah. And if you, uh, when, uh, when you are standing there, what, what, no matter what instrument you're playing, when you're in practice or whatever, you are you stare at a point on the wall or somewhere. You just pick a point, you stare, and you just don't look away. I've had moments where with my eyes wide open, I was so into the music, all I could see was white because my I was staring at one spot so long, everything just sort of faded into this white hue. Hmm. Well, we are snare players also have their own cymbal player, right? Every We have... In, 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 yeah, we had a cymbal line. Right. And yeah. more often than not, the cymbal players are, are girls. And they, so what they do is they face away and they do their thing. And then when it's time during the performance, they'll spin around and hold up the cymbal. And then, you know, I'll write on it on the snare and then they'll spin around or crash it, whatever. It's a really fun dynamic. And my cymbal girl was uh, your girlfriend at the yeah. time, right? Yeah. Not my current wife. My well, yeah, it was just this, before, yeah. again, a billion years ago. And this was, it was your, your girlfriend. And, uh, let, I'm trying to figure out this. I'm just going to go there. Okay. She was, she was super hot. She was super hot. Okay. This is happening. And she was, uh, I was just focused. And now my, I, I tend to look down and we were it's just practicing and my focus point. I didn't even realize it, dude. Okay. This is, this, uh -huh. I'm going to say it. Uh huh. It was her butt. And I wasn't yeah, trying to. Realize. I didn't even know I was looking yeah. at her butt. I was just so focused. And then <laughs> my brain's all, hey, you know, you're looking at this girl's butt. And then and then the other part of my brain's all, hey, you know, her boyfriend's looking at you. And I look over and you're just like, your vocal point is me. My vocal so point you're looking at me, look at her butt. Yeah. <laughs> it's like this triangle. Uh, and I was like, I got to find somewhere else to look. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that was fun. I, I remember um, when I did try out for drum corps, you were asked to, to go try out too. And you couldn't because I think you just had... Your, your son was very young and you had to make sure you were able to take care of him. You couldn't just go tour yeah, the country was, for, for months and leave him. Yeah. And so I was super bummed you weren't able to join me on that journey because you would have you would have been uh, probably next to me on the snare line. Yeah. I'd still be on the end. I was. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. You got good. When it fast. was done, when it was done, I think I had gained some skills. But at the time of tryouts, you had me be for sure. Yeah. Anyway, good question. Soulless shreds. Awesome. All right. Moving on. We got Mr. Lay. I think. Am I saying that right? This is from Mr. Lay. It says, uh, impulse bops and skiz hups. Which is better and why? <laughs> <laughs> I like okay. the bop. All right, let's explain, first of all, what we're talking about. When <laughs> we play Minecraft, I do hop a lot. Hop, and I just do that yeah. a lot when I'm doing stuff, and you bop. When I you... usually bop like when I'm placing blocks or yeah. like put something in the chest. Just bop it. Yeah. Just got to yeah. bop it. <laughs> bop it over there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and now, granted, granted, bop has its own song because the Ellie beat me. Yes, thank now. you, Ellie. Yeah, you, you can, can bop, bop if you want, want to. to. Dude, that was clean. Dude, we would have never done that through Discord. That's why we do this in person. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been so dirty in discord yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah that would have been bad but so that i gotta give bop gets a couple points out but here's why hup is better okay okay all right the reason hup is better is because it applies to so much more than just placing a block you can do it when you're jumping hup hup you can do it when you're placing blocks you can do it when you're in a battle and it just zeroes your focus hup, hup is so much more universal bop is is okay. specifically for laying blocks and that's it you don't get to use it for anything else. Okay. I'm, I'm going to let you have it because I have a song. <laughs> we have a song. <laughs> we did it together. Fine. Uh, thanks again, Ellie. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. We're we'll open a link in the description. Yeah, I was just so going to say that. Go check it yeah, out. Yeah, you have to check it out. <laughs> All right. Excellent question. Miranda Miller 91 says, love you guys. I have a good question. Has there ever been a moment where in y'all's lives where you realized your friendship was going to last? Like you felt like you knew you'd always be friends Ooh, that's a deep one yeah that's a super deep one well i'll tell you what i was 
I was super impressed that you showed up that one day at the community college to join me in that networking class. Yeah. I did not see that coming. Yeah. Uh, because our friendship was very loose at that time. Like, like we had literally just reconnected and in high school, you mentioned it, you were my section leader. I was, you know, a student of, of yours. And so you couldn't make, make a friendship with me. But afterwards when we had that get together and I was like, Hey, you should come join me. Like that was, I still weren't, we weren't really like friends, friends at right. that point. And so when you, when you came that day, I was like, Oh, this could be the start of something. Beautiful, yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I agree. <laughs> I, I can agree with that. I would say that was probably, I don't think I knew that we were going to, you know, be friends forever. No. And then, and I also, I, I will say this, the, the defining moment that there was something, I don't know. I don't want to use the word magical. It's too fluffy, but the, the defining <laughs> moment that there was something special or whatever. I think, and I remember what was the first incident, but you and I have this code word and it's not really that cryptic, but when one of us says the word Houston, and I don't even know where this started. When one of us says the word Houston, the person who just heard the word Houston drops everything and yeah. just whatever needs to happen. Right. And we've had, we've both had to do it a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Right now, granted, there was a time there where I was traveling for work a lot and then things were happening at home and I needed your help on, it wasn't anything, nothing bad happening at home, but there was a time where I was out of state on, on business and my daughter was very young and she missed the bus and my wife was already at work and that, that just set me into mm. a huge panic. And I like, and, and here's the best part. This is where I was running a million dollar event, like a three day million oh, dollar yeah. event. And were. we were about yeah. to be, we were about to, uh, production was about to go live in the next 20 minutes and I'm out of state and I get a text from my daughter. I missed the bus and now. And I just text you. I'm like, Houston. And you're like, what's up? And I, and I gave the scenario. You said, I'm on my way. And it was like this, yeah. you know what I mean? And that, that, that is like, I don't remember the first time we did that, but I think like that was sort of like when it started happening, like, yeah, this is somebody I can count on. Yeah. You know, for yeah, you do it all the time. You, you take care of me too. You know, like when I go out of town, you come over take care of my animals and stuff. Like, yeah. You've, yeah. We've had each other's back. And I think that's, that's just the true like friendship that, that we have. You yeah. know, like, like you said, we, we'll drop anything. We'll do anything for each other, especially when we're in, when we're in need. So yeah. that car ride, I still remember, <clears throat> I still remember picking up your daughter and it's, it, it's not like, it's not like I know your daughter that well or knew it at the time, even because it's, you know, when we hang out, it's usually your daughter's not like always there. And right. you know, yeah, I've, I've known her since she was a baby, but <laughs> still a teenager <clears throat> getting picked up by a friend of yours. Like, I'm not sure who was more uncomfortable in that car ride, but right. <laughs> she, was a, she was a champ. It yeah. was great. <laughs> she just, but at the same time, I will say this, there's, um, this, you know, you felt that you'll be, you know, always be friends. I, I guess I do feel that way, but I think part of it is not just assuming we're always going to be friends. That's you know true. what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't take the friendship for granted type thing. It's one of those things where it's got the word ship in it. It's a form, it's a form of a relationship. So it's like, you know, you can't just take the stuff for granted and just pretend they're always going to be there. You gotta, yeah. you gotta, you gotta acknowledge it for what it is. You gotta, and it's something special. So don't blow it. Yeah. But I mean, <clears throat> it's not all, you know, roses no. <laughs> and rainbows and roses. Like we've said, like we're different people and like we have different opinions on, on a lot of stuff. Like mm -hmm. when it comes to our content and choices we make style wise and, editing and, and thumbnails and stuff like that like we have a lot of of like back and forth in in disagreements and stuff but we always work it out we do like we've got some creative differences and yeah. and but it's but honestly even then i think we're dealing with a bit of a luxury that we do see eye to eye on a lot of stuff like yeah. like and we get lucky a lot there's times in fact when we first started creating together uh it got to a point to where we were agreeing on so much. I think I actually brought it up. I think I was like, we need to start disagreeing because <laughs> we need to work on the skill set yeah. of getting through those moments because they're coming, right. especially since we're going to expand our palette. You know what I mean? And if we're going to expand it, then we got to be able to have this, this dialogue. And yeah. I, I think you're right. I think we always do. We, it well. we worked through a lot of things pretty well. I think I agree. Okay. Um, is that shell Am I saying that right? You think? Shalafon. That's how I would say it, but I say, every, I say every name wrong, so it's fine. I like saying that. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, the question I have is, how do you manage goals? For example, choosing a goal, making the goal challenging, but still possible. And how do you progress from failing on a goal? Thanks for the great content. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, it's an interesting it's one. A, this is, you know, this, uh, let me think about it, because I kind of want to defer to you on this, because I genuinely believe you're much better at this than I am. I, I do, I, I you know... I'm not, we're not going to dive into it, but I don't, I, I suck at this. Yeah. I, I feel like a failure the entire journey. Yeah, you're right. I've never, 
I've never failed. So, um, <laughs> oh god, yeah. My my secret is I just don't set goals, <laughs> and then whatever, and then you don't fail. Actually, you do. You do have given me a hard time about that, like not having expectations about something. Yeah, yeah. just just so that I won't like. <laughs> Yeah, well, okay, but don't 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 get it twisted. This that's a little bit different. Well, okay, that's fair. You the idea. I don't get my hopes. I try not to get my hopes up. Right. Like I always like. No, that's not gonna happen. And yeah. You're like you're just saying that so you won't be disappointed. Yeah. When it doesn't happen, and it, now you win either way. Yes. Yeah. Right? Just, now you're now you yeah. win because you were right about it not working out, and I'm or like, or you just, win because it worked out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I'm like you're such a coward. Uh, I was like, just deal with I'm, failure. I'm a coward. No. Um. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me, it was just like goals are more about like what is it that i want right yeah it, like what do i want i wanted to at some point in time i realized i wanted to become a full-time content creator and so that was my goal I, like it's like what do you want to do with your life what do you want to do next you know i want to lose weight okay now i need to set the goal i'm going to work out five days a week i'm going to eat better you set those goals and then you set them in in a manageable way too like you have to manage your expectations toward your goals because if, if, if I said, I'm, I'm going to start a health journey tomorrow and I'm going to dive in, I'm going to do the hardest thing out there. I'm going to do the, the 75 hard is the, the hardest one I know of, right? Yeah. It's a program that's yeah. like super, super hard. Uh, and at the same time, I'm going to do whole 30 diet, which is one of the <laughs> most strictest diets like ever. Yeah. If I was, if I was going to do that, then I think I just set myself up for failure. Right. So I've, and I've done that before because I'm an all or nothing type of person and I failed. Yeah. Um, and, and what you do, you just, you realize over time that like, oh, maybe I should have, you know, maybe not done the 75 hard. I should have maybe just tried to get through a week, you yeah. know, yeah. <laughs> and, and maybe not have 10 things to cross off every day. Maybe just settle like, all right, this week I'm going to start with exercising next week. I'm going to start with dieting and that kind of thing, like ease into it. So set att- obtainable goals, I'd say yeah, is, is a good way to do it. You know, I mean. Yeah, there is the idea that you shoot for the stars or whatever. And you'll and hit the moon. It, and yeah, and you'll hit the moon. But um, sometimes it could be detrimental to, to aim for too much, you know, as well. And so yep. I try to keep I try to keep my my goals like ob- obtainable. And then that way and then I get there and then I just set the next one and yeah. continue to set them. I, th- I, I like that. I And that's, the, you know, it, we I we talked about this. I said aim low, you know, and yeah. I don't mean aim low for your life. I mean, on the journey, like. When you're when you're walking up a flight of stairs, you're not looking at that top stair. You're looking at the next one. Yeah. Oh, this one, this step, 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 and then you can leave them behind you. But if your goal was to get to the top in one leap, well, you can't do that. Right. You have to go up the steps, right? So this is for I, you know we talked about the work at, working out with my son. I I did have an internal goal. I was like, before the next podcast, I will have worked out with him three times. Hmm. Worked out with him three times, but you know what I didn't do? I didn't work out with him four times. That's the only problem, but it's okay. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, I could have been more, but I worked out with them three times. And now, now my next goal is to let's get the next week planned ahead of time. So it's a testament that's going to become repetitive. So you're right. You, you, you aim low and you set your goals that way. But when you fail, which you will, okay. Cause this is part of the question too, is how do you manage yeah. the failure? You gotta, I'm going into Ted Lasso, dude. Cause I love that show. Ted Lasso is a good show. You gotta be a goldfish. You know what I mean? You got to have a short memory. And that, that is like, that is one of, if you are not watching Ted Lasso, you, you got to be watching Ted Lasso. It is one of the Super. greatest shows yeah. of all time. And it's, you got to be a goldfish. You got to have to have a short memory. You have to, it, and I even do it in poker hands. You know what I mean? Losing a poker hand is not a sign of a failure. Playing poorly and getting outplayed is, and you got to learn from it, have a short memory, move on. Yeah. That's well, it. no, that's the point I was, I was, I was waiting for you to say was the learn from it part, because mm-hmm. you can almost interpret the, the goldfish thing as like, <laughs> forget it ever happened right. and, and move on. But it's not that you still need to have that learning piece. Yeah. Like we value, we, and, and we've talked about this too. We value failure almost as much as success because you will learn so much more in, in failing oh, yeah. that you can apply moving forward to not fail again, mm-hmm. where if you're just always successful, you're not getting those lessons. You're not getting that the status quo the whole exactly. time. Exactly. Yeah. So, so failure is something to absolutely embrace mm-hmm. um, and make sure that, you kind of do a retrospective on what happened and figure it out and then, you know, change. Yeah. Right. Apply, apply some new knowledge to the next round. But th- the thing is the next round has to happen. You have to get back up yet. That's when you become the goldfish. Try again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, that's absolutely right. Got to learn from it. Log it away. Move on. Exactly. All right. I'm up. Uh, Andrew Holland. Love the podcast. Question. If your kids wanted to do YouTube, would you let them struggle and find out what works for them 
Or would your dad hearts jump in to try to influence what they were doing to save them some hardship? <laughs> That's an interesting question. I mean, I've I've had some experience with with my kids wanting to do streaming or or YouTube. And the first thing I thought was that I would let them just figure it out. Maybe give them some tips because like they would they'd be like, I don't even know how to like what software to use you know yeah. sure okay i'll jump in and say yeah you're you're gonna want to use obs all right yeah i mean you're gonna need a by the you're gonna need a microphone you're gonna need you know at least small time stuff but i don't think i was going to um like really get involved you know yeah to, with that because there is there is a part when you're first starting off that you like those again like the, those lessons that you learn in failing it's the same thing with this like let them find their way, find their voice, find their niche, find whatever it is they're trying or wanting to do and and then try to stay out of it, but then be there to to help them. Yeah. Right. Not not control them. Right. That's kind of the approach I was go going to take. I mean, my both my kids, I have three kids, two of them wanted to do this and both of them started down the path and then quickly were like, no, it's not for me. So yeah. I didn't have to travel it too far. Right. And well, it's, it's gotta be their journey, like you're yeah. saying. Right. But at the same time, it, you, it's okay to offer things that is going to help speed up the journey. As long as it is, it's, it's theirs. Yeah. So if they wanted to be, if I was a painter and they wanted to be a painter, I'm not going to grab their wrist and teach them how to paint. I'm not going to tell them what to paint. I am going to tell them what the best brushes are and the best yeah. type of canvas and the, and what kind of lighting you should be under. Mm -hmm. That's the type or, or, and I will tell them what kind of, you know, ambient noises worked for me. That's what I'll do just to help them along that way. But at the same time, I'm also going to say to them, if this is something that you want to do, that's great. And I'll, I'll help you. I'll, I'll help you give a leg up. You're going to drive this you're, yep. you're because this, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fish you along here. You're going to be only because you expressed a little bit of interest. You're going to drive this with my own brother. My, my own brother wanted to start a YouTube channel and I was super excited. He does scuba and I have, okay. I have footage of him scuba diving with sharks and it just oh my makes me crazy. It's like, <laughs> if that shark was just like, you know what? I'm hungry. Home. That's it. You know? And I, I was, it makes me super nervous. Well, he wanted to do a YouTube channel. I'm like, dude, anytime. Let's just get going. And he goes, well, what do I do? I said, just start a YouTube account. Just do that. Yeah. And just release one video. And, and just, and my thing was just, you let me know of anything you need. I'm happy to help you along the way. And that was a while ago. And every once in a while, I'm like, are you, cause I was really excited for him, but he didn't do yeah. anything, which means hey, well, he wasn't really that interested. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, it goes back to the kind of want it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It. Yeah. I kind of <laughs> want it. Want it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what it was. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was I was always thinking like, oh, if they continue with this, do they ever get to the point to where, you know, I use the platform that I've built to to help them, like as far as like shout outs and stuff, right? And I, was I mean, like, it's like, I was like, ah, maybe say at some point, but I think it'd be a long ways down the road because there is value in the struggle, right? Like I remember that first couple years where we were doing the Impulse SV channel together and like it was it was an upward climb to get to 1000 subscribers to the mm -hmm. point that when we finally did after years i think maybe multiple years or a year and a half or so like we were so proud of that accomplishment of getting to a thousand that like we made a whole video on it you know like we were just, oh you're talking about your original channel yeah the original yeah, yeah. impulse sv channel right yeah. and so yeah it was a, it was like a climb it mm -hmm. was a, it was a real struggle to get there and you know we found we found a comp self of a sense of accomplishment Right. Mm -hmm. But if, if I just, you know, my kids started a YouTube channel and I was like, Hey everybody, my kids started a YouTube channel, go check it out. And suddenly they get, you know, thousands of subscribers. They're never going to, they're never going to appreciate that journey as much. And yeah. so I was like, I don't know if I would, you know? Yeah. It's, that's a tough one because yeah. it's also one of those, eh, just, just, it's okay to jumpstart it. it. It is. It's okay to help them and jumpstart it as long as, they don't lose the value of what the work is, yeah. right? That there's, you're right. There's value in that struggle, but that struggle also has um, a propensity to be detrimental because that first thousand, the first, the first hundred is painful. The first thousand is really hard. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's, and it shuts a lot of people down. So the the argument is, well, it it weeds out the weak is, yeah. is sort of what you're getting at here. But the field itself is so profoundly saturated that it, it, a little it, jump kick would would definitely help. Yeah. I was I found myself on the fence as they were starting their journey trying to think about that and trying yeah. to trying to like make that decision luckily for me I, I guess luckily for me they they didn't follow through but um 
See, and that that's where I I like I don't know I I really enjoy when I when I am streaming and it's time to raid. Not like a huge streamer, I'm a relatively big streamer, but I'm not a huge streamer. But when I'm streaming, it's time for me to raid. Uh, sometimes I raid some bigger names, pretty rarely. But my favorite thing to do is actually yeah. to raid the smaller yeah. streamers. I just love the feeling of seeing that they've got three people on their stream and I send over several hundred, you know, that, yeah. that type of thing is it's fun to give those people a leg up because exactly. it's just, yeah, give them a chance to get some exposure yeah. if you can. Cause they, otherwise the system's not going to, right. Uh, it's not built well enough <clears throat> to, unfortunately. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. It's fun. Okay. Um, this is Sarah Redden. Am I saying that right? Yeah. I'm going to be worried about if I'm saying the name right the whole time, by the way. Sorry. Uh, so mispronouncing <laughs> names is a service we provide. You're welcome. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, what is your recipe for a su successful, healthy marriage? I'm due to get married hopefully soon. We have been together for six years now. Wow. Oh, man. Okay. Um, yeah. You know what? Sort of like we talked about in raising kids and there's no manual. It's kind of the same thing for yeah. marriage, I think. Um, I've... I, uh, I definitely don't have all the right answers. And I'll tell you this, I've not, I mean, I've been married a long time. And in the beginning I was, a, I was a really self-centered, selfish person. And, and I wasn't happy. I mean, I'm not that I was unhappy with the marriage. I just, in life in general was, you know, I was also working like three jobs, but life in general was kind of weighing on me. And, and it, I found myself in this space to where every day I was like, I, I I'm not a good partner for my own my own wife here. I'm not the partner I should be. And everything for me, this is a me thing. Everything switched and everything about the marriage got better when I just stopped worrying so much about myself. Because yeah. when, when everything you're doing is for yourself, you're never going to end up being satisfied. So it's this, it's this endless journey of just misery. This is me. But as soon as I found a way to make my own happiness all centered around bringing um, support and joy to my wife, it just made everything better. You know what I mean? I love my wife so much. I'm very lucky. I don't know how in God's name she has stuck with me all these many years. I know I don't deserve her, but I'm very, very grateful um, for my wife. But I found all that for me turned around when I was like, I'm, I'm going to care about myself way, way less in terms of this marriage. And I want to make what I'm going to look for opportunities to be there for her, to do things for her. And it's the little things just mm -hmm. like seeking out the, the, the tiny things that I can do. Like if she's, running home if she's like a little late from work you know her she feeds the dog i feed the cats we have all our different you know things that we do but if she's running a little late from work i'll feed the dogs it's a it's a task at my job at my house i have five dogs <laughs> you do. so it's actually a task and there's a special way to do it so when she comes home and the dogs are fed it wasn't it took me 10 15 minutes who cares but it means the world to her yeah. right so those little things that show like i'd want her to know that you've got somebody that is, per, is will always be in your corner yeah yeah, is is uh, cliche as it sounds, you know, they, they say that communication is the key. Yeah. Um, and it absolutely is. It, it 100 percent is. And I've I've learned that. And, you know, my wife, she's she's not a big talker. No, right. She's, not. she's very quiet. <laughs> she's not a big talker, but she she does communicate very well in, in, in other ways, like other than just using her words. And mm -hmm. so I've gotten really astute on picking up just on like vibes that yeah. she gives off. You yeah. know, I can tell, I can tell when she's irritated. She doesn't have to tell me that she's irritated. I can just tell, I can just see it and feel it in her body language and things like that. So, um, that's one thing that's helped is just really, really learning how to communicate with each other. One thing that, that we both went through when we were, you know, not, not at our peak, uh, you know, cause marriages, they will have their ebbs and flows, uh, you know? And so it was one of the, one of the times that we weren't really feeling as well connected as we had before. Uh, we both read love language uh the the five oh, yeah. love languages book mm -hmm. which is a really good book i recommend it um and we both learned something about what we needed and for her she she learned that she is more of like the touch like touch means a lot to her so um you know like you've said it like impulse is not much of a hugger he doesn't yeah. like when i hug him and stuff so we found out like i i'm not really much of a touch person but she is and so i need to now understand that and almost in a way, like make a sacrifice to and go out of my way to to give her hugs and and give her that touch that she needs. Yeah. And then I learned that that I what I need was words of affirmation. Like I need her to just kind of um, reassure me that I'm I'm doing I'm doing okay. You know, yeah. like, I'm doing I'm yes, you are a good dad. Yes, you're 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 providing for the family, and we we appreciate it and and all that stuff. Um, and so for whenever she like tells me that kind of thing. That's what pumps my chest up and, and makes me feel more connected to her. So we learned all that. 
and we're still it's a work in progress as always but we're still trying to put those more to use like like uh, honestly i'll be you know i'll be totally honest here like i don't give her hugs enough you know i don't mm-hmm. i don't do this because it's not innate in in my nature so i have to actually like kind of tell myself remind myself and force myself to do it because i know she needs it yeah and like you said that's that's the point of like stop being selfish you know what she needs give her what she needs yeah you know a hundred percent you're right yeah and, and she's so funny too man i love your wife she's and you know i've known her we've known her the same I, i've known her longer than you i've known her <laughs> i have i've known her and because when we we met her at the same time but i was sitting closer than you were so when the light rays bounced off her face it hit my eyeballs before they hit your eyeballs because you were behind me <laughs> that's so, like, yeah that's how much yeah so but she is um she's so funny because i remember one of my favorite stories were <laughs> she's so funny dude we were at your uh house i don't know if you were watching football i don't know what it was but my wife and i were sitting on one couch and then you and her were on the other couch and and i'm touch i'm big time touch and and my wife is too and I, my wife had her legs up on my lap and I was just like, like rubbing her feet or something. I don't know. And your wife just stuck her foot right in your face. <laughs> it was the funniest I, thing ever. Do you see what they're doing? <laughs> dude, was, Learn from them. It was so <laughs> funny, dude. I started laughing. Uh, she, she's a good sport. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, I read that one. You're up. Yeah. Uh, next one from John Noble. Two questions. You guys have been friends for a long time, even though you seem to always be in good moods towards each other. Has there been a time when you were mad at each other, and how did you handle that? When, if ever, will Skiz join Hermitcraft? Oh, yeah, the Hermitcraft. We, we kind of talked <laughs> about that covered one. covered the Hermitcraft one, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we've had times, I mean, come on, we've been friends forever, but there's yeah. been one time that almost ended everything. <laughs> <sighs> Well, yeah, I know where you're going and I'm not very, it's not a proud moment oh in my life. Oh boy. It was, well, that's, uh, it's not a proud moment in my life either. We've actually talked a little bit about this. We kind of joked about it, but I don't think a lot of people realize the severity of it. And it was, this is such a stupid story. You know what this is? This should have been on the, we are, we're, we're idiots. idiots. This is a story we should have told. Yeah, we're you know, idiots. it's funny. It's we're idiots. When we did that, we were, we were, we were idiots. Um, I remember before we started that podcast, I was like, dude, I can't hardly think of any stories. I'm a, I guess I must have never been an idiot. You know? Yeah, <laughs> but right. obviously not the truth. But uh, <laughs> as soon as the podcast ended and like, the next week went on, I thought of about like 10 more stories and I'm like, Oh yeah, whoops. That yeah. could have easily, but you're right. This one we're about to tell is, is it's one it, of those moments. So yeah. I guess we're back. And there's a guy out there who's probably not aware, but I, he's could very well be the reason we're still friends or I don't know, whatever. Maybe it's not that dark, but it might be. So he, uh, can, I, I, can I go now? I was going to say, can I just leave the room while you tell this story? Cause I really don't want to hear it. Okay. Here it is. <laughs> I can't wait. Oh boy. Everybody's like, God, what is it? Uh, you know what? We'll save it for next podcast. No, no, geez, <laughs> so mean. Uh, all right. So this was, we were in Vegas and it was for, uh, for your wedding yeah. is why we were there. And you were set to get married. I think the next like day, the next day or yeah, two. something like yeah. that. And we were, all of us were just uh, the guy, we were young, very young. And this is definitely in the realm of we're idiots. So there is a show. It's still around. It's, it's called Jackass. Right. And that's, mm. I'm, I'm just saying the, the name and it's with Johnny Knoxville and, and it's, I don't know why, dude, I just, I love it. Like it, the show yeah. ever since it, for when it first came out and they were operating off a nothing budget, I'm like, these guys are really dumb, but they're like right up my alley. Like it's so, <laughs> it's so funny. Now the gross stuff I don't like, I don't like the yeah. gross stuff, but it's when they do, it's just silly stuff that uh, I I don't know I can't get over. It. It's really funny when they come up and they just shave each other's heads and stuff like that, right? They were they were still embracing being kids. That's like, right. Like uh, we talked about this on the the growing up podcast. Yeah, like, yeah. Steve O even said when he was interviewed, he said I found out at a young age I hate work. I hate it. I never want to work. So him and Johnny and and the others they created this show called Jackass where they act like that. They act like a bunch of jackasses and, but they, they do hurt each other a little bit, but not yeah. too much, but they, they get into it. They, they do some funny stuff. Okay. Well, we decided we, that's why I'm saying this is a weird idiot. It's not just a you mm-hmm. thing. We decided we're going to be jackass at your wedding, not in your wedding, but the day before. The day before and we, we had, were just going to act like that. Like, like, right. yeah, just, just do silly kind of hurtful things to each other or whatever. Anyways, we had been drinking a little bit and, yeah. uh, I, don't know how I knew it was coming. I just knew you were about to slap me like with everything. I just, I don't know. I, I, this, I had this great spidey sense moment and you came up and tried to sucker slap me so hard, dude. It wasn't a punch. It was a slap. 
and you swung hard and I, Jason, born that dude. I whipped my head back and you hit nothing but air. And where you where you should have been like, wow, nice dodge. You decided to seize that moment of me being exposed and you slugged me in the yeah. stomach. You punched Probably because of the time I was embarrassed that, that you missed. That I missed. Yeah, 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 because there was people watching. Yeah. And you you missed, right? So in, the, in that one split instance, I quote unquote got the best of you for yeah. one second and you punched me in the stomach and I was completely exposed. And I will also say that since you were not an enemy, you were a good friend of mine. When I whipped my head back and you missed, I thought it was over, right? Yeah. So I was done trying to be on guard. I thought I had to leave, you know, a minute of downtime. And you hit me in the stomach and it 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 hurt like really bad. Like where your eye your eyes instantly swell up to the point to where impulse wasn't in front of me anymore. The person in front of me was somebody who was going to the hospital. That was what's gonna happen. And and it was like I the the rage that took over. I'm a really nice guy, but the rage that took over was visceral. And I remember mm -hmm. I came at you to where uh, this is going to be, he's going in the hospital. I don't know who this dude is. He's going in the hospital. This is going to be bad. And I was like, I was going to, I was going to, I was going to obviously hit you. I was going to get you on the ground and I wasn't going to stop. Like I was so mad. I got you raged. I was raged, rage, yeah. dude. And the second that happened, our very good friend who I've known even longer than you, I've known him since fourth grade, Drew, jumped in between us and pushed me back like in that instant dude he's and he pushed me back and he locked eyes with me and he said it's jackass it's jackass we're doing jackass and he's like he shouldn't have hit you but it's we're in he yeah. just kept talking he was a savior and i remember being like i am so upset right now and <laughs> i was just like looking over his shoulder at you and you were backing up and that that was what i was yeah like, I'd, I'd realized at that point i'd crossed the line yeah and, and i didn't know how to fix it yeah you know yeah i don't think there was anything i, I would have been able to say myself to yeah. to calm me down yeah so thankfully drew was there yeah and i think so between his words and what was very obvious uh instant regret on your face it was able to kind of calm me down a little bit and then he pushed me away i went into a store and i was like well i'm i mean i can't this can't go on reply i have to reply so I went through yeah. my head. I'm like, I'm not going to hit him in the face. He has pictures tomorrow for his Thank wedding. You. Yeah. I, like, li this is my what went through my head. So mad. Yeah. He has pictures tomorrow. I'm not going to hit him in the face. I'm not going to hit him in the stomach because he just did that to me. And that really hurts. And I don't, I don't want to hurt him that bad, but I got, I got to hit him. So I'll punch him in the chest. <laughs> so I came and you just knew something was coming. Uh, like you were just like, Ugh. and I, I actually had to go get money to dish out money to people. For some reason there were, we were split a bill or something. I don't remember. And I was like, okay, dish, dish, dish. Here we are. And I dished the last person, my left foot came forward and I drilled you in the chest with everything, dude. And I saw you like the shockwave and even I had instant regret at that moment because I was like, oh, I hit him really hard. I'm still upset. And I hit you and you just kind of, your whole body jutted back. And, and the next day you had a big yellow circle. On your yeah, chest. I did have a nice big bruise. <laughs> and, and yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was probably, I mean, you're, None of this is is should be done. <laughs> no, right? don't do any of it. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I mean that could have gone poorly too. But I knew at the time I deserved it, and so obviously, like I don't remember my exact reaction when you hit me, but I'm I'm guessing I was just like, yeah, I deserve that. Yeah, you went back and you kind of doubled over a little bit, and and you I actually think you said we're even now or something. I'm like, yeah, yeah we're even now. But uh, Drew, I don't know if you're listening, buddy. But if you are. I think you should know that like this podcast might be here because of you, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And uh, yeah, moral of the story is don't be a jackass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh so, man. We got, dude, we just, that was one page. We have two pages. Holy smokes. Of questions. Ooh. And um, maybe we got another Q and a I'm podcast. wondering if we do hold on to these. Yeah. Because otherwise this is going to end up being like an hour. I don't want to rush through the no. rest of these questions. Cause we feel like we've been uh, talking already a long time. Yeah. Yeah. We're this, let's, let's my, my vote. Let's yeah. I did not. Okay. This has been so much fun. Yeah. So we'll do another one. We'll do another Q and a, we'll do another Q and a yeah, we'll podcast. All right. And we're going to save these uh, questions. We didn't even, we, we went through, you guys posed a lot of great questions so many good ones. Yeah. and feel free to put some more. At the bottom, yeah, of we're always week. accepting yeah. questions. Yeah. yeah, so we'll make it uh, not like a you know, it's not like the next podcast is going to be part two. But no, we'll we'll whenever we have uh, we feel like it's time, we'll we'll do another Q and A session. Yeah, we'll pull even more questions. Ah. that's crazy. I would. Oh, that was we answered Holy. seven out of like there's dude sixteen. You guys have some great <laughs> questions. You really do. And you know what? I got to tell you. Um, Boy, we're ending on kind of a dark Q and A, aren't we? That's true. <laughs> Should we pick a fun one real? Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Maybe we pick one more. I don't want to end on me. I know. Like, uh, where's where's a fun one? 
Here, here we go. Here we go. Where did Dipple Dop come from? Okay, from, uh, there we go. From Tanya Clattenburg. <laughs> Let's do that one because you're right. Yeah. Ending on the you almost killed me and I almost. <laughs> yeah, that's probably not a good place. Where did Dipple Dop come from? Okay, it was a fun one. Yeah. I, I like. I give everybody nicknames. I just do it. You do. I get everybody I, gets a nickname. Yeah, Tango's Tango Top. Yeah. Right. And you're and I started calling you Dipple Dop, but it's because. I started calling you Impy Dimpy. Okay. But yes. the reason it, that actually goes back to both of us, because we used to do this thing to where we just we we just added an extra word to stuff. Like for example, my best you used to have a dog named Sedona, such a sweet dog. That dog could jump. Yeah. And you know what she had? Hops. hops. But not just hops. She had hoppies. hoppies. Not just hoppies. She had go. Hoppy doppies. She had hoppy doppies. Yeah. It was something we did. So yeah. I it's the dumbest thing in the world, but we just started doing it. And then I started calling you Impy. So I was like, oh, I guess I gotta call you Impy Dimpy. And it turned in, and then I started nicknaming people like Tango Top, and I called you Impy Dimpy Dop, and then it turned into Dimpy Dop, and then I just started calling you Dipple Dop, D I P P L E. It just keeps morphing. Yeah, so I don't want to know it's going to be ten years. Oh, it, it's been Dipple Dop for a Dipple long time. Dop. Yeah, that, <laughs> I guess that's I. That's I haven't like thought of it. I haven't thought of that like how that transitioned from impulse yeah to dipple dop like they literally have zero connection yeah i know it goes all the way I, and, and in because fact, you've been calling me dipple dop for so long i just like re it relates in my mind but really it does on paper it doesn't relate at all <laughs> well yeah it makes no sense so in and, and, and well here's what's the best part is when we were talking about doing our own uh channel we tossed around the idea of the channel being called dipple dop and it would literally be like you're dipple i'm dop dipple dop. right but i think there's a channel out there called that yeah. Free plug for you guys. I think I think there's a channel out there <laughs> called it. Do. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> you and your names, man. Keep yeah. it up. Keep it up. People love, especially when you give uh your your viewers nicknames. Yeah. And then they go and they actually change yep. their nickname in Twitch. Like whatever you nickname, then they go change their name in Twitch to the nickname. I, All of a sudden they show up in my chat. I'm like, I was there in the in the stream that Skiz gave you that yeah. nickname. <laughs> yeah. Mosley, man. I started calling Mosley Moselmop and now or no Moselbop. Mm -hmm. And now Mosley's name is Moselbop. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. There's a you have a, there's a few. There's a few more too. Yeah. Pearly Pop? That's another one. Created that back in the legacy that's days. <laughs> yep. Oh man, keep it up. Keep yeah. it up because the people will enjoy that. So okay. all right, there we go. That's much better than you killing me. Yeah. That's, a, that's a much better place to end this podcast. <laughs> oh, I did, uh, I did kill you. You're still here. Yeah. All right, that's good. So we'll do another one. I keep looking all the way up like the camera's up there. All right, guys. <laughs> We'll do another one. Uh, so we'll do another. So we got great questions here. Feel free to put your questions. It doesn't mean we're going to definitely pick them, but we like yeah. to have a big bank uh, yeah. to choose from. Yeah. That was, so, yeah. That was fun. Uh, that was... Another another fun session. Looking forward to our next one. Yeah. All right, man. I'll see you next time. See you.